Um, the last example regarding the power series will be still an uh, extended power series solution. Okay, the example three. Extended power series solution. Okay, and uh, let's write the second order of the x squared minus one, x squared by double prime minus x squared plus one, x y prime plus x squared plus one, y equals to zero. And as per usual, the first step for solving this variable uh, linear uh, ordinary differential equations is rewrite the highest differential coefficient to be one. So the first step, uh, we will write divide double prime with the coefficient is one. So every other term need to divide by x squared minus one times x squared. So minus x squared plus one divided by x squared minus one divided by x squared y uh, prime, sorry. This should be x because x squared and x cancel out by x plus um, x squared plus one divided by x square minus one divided by x square y equals to zero, okay? And um, when we have x equals to x zero equals to zero, we can see whether this bx term and the cx term is um, analytic or not. So the bx is equals to x squared plus one divided by x squared minus one cx is equals to x plus uh, x squared plus one minus x squared minus one. So bx and cx are the same. And when x equals to x naught equals to zero, they are analytic. So analytic. Then we can solve using the extended power series, which is the frobenness uh, series. Um, so we have um, second step, which we define y, y prime, y double prime with extended power series. Okay. And the extended power series form is from m, a, m, x to the m plus r, right? So uh, our center, which is x naught is equals to zero and at x naught equals to zero that bx and cx is still analytic, we can solve using the extended power series term. If you x naught equals to the other number, then you still need to check whether the bx naught, cx naught are analytical or not. If not analytical, you couldn't solve using extended power series. If they can analytical, we can set up with uh, am times x minus x naught to the m plus r order. So that is why we always check whether they are analytical or not. Then the second step, we need to generate x uh, y prime be the same as the previous example, m plus r times am x to the m plus r minus one, y double prime equals to m plus r times m plus r minus one a m two times m x to the m plus r minus two. Okay, so this is our y y prime y double prime. Then the third step is putting the y y prime y double prime back into the original ODE, right? You uh, put into the original ODE. Uh, with the power series format, okay? So um, what is our original E is this term, right? So let's put uh, our x force y double prime minus x squared y prime double prime minus x cube y prime minus x y prime plus x square y plus y equals to zero. So this is the um, power series original format and we just need to repre replace y by prime by double prime. Then what we have is the sum 
from m equals to zero to infinity, okay? Uh, m plus r times m plus r minus one, a m x to the m plus r plus two, that is the first term, minus the sum from m equals to zero to infinity, m plus r times m plus r minus one, x squared y double prime will lead to a m x to the m plus r. Okay. Then going to the third term minus the sum from m equals to zero to infinity m plus r a m x to the m plus r minus one plus three will be m plus r plus two. Then the first term will be minus the sum from m equals to zero to infinity m plus r a m x to the m plus r. And then the final term will be just the y itself will be plus m from zero to infinity a m x to the m plus r will be equals to zero, okay? So this is all six term writing by the power series. And we just need to know what term is the highest term. Then we will shift all the exponential part to be like the highest term, which is x to the m plus r plus two for this problem. Then after that, we also need to make sure that all the sum part will start with m equals to zero. So that is our first step, okay? So the first step, we need to do two things. First step, first of all, shift all term to be like x to the m plus r plus two. That is the highest term. Second, make sure that the sum term will start from x zero to infinity. So that is the first step, which is the most important step for power series. Then um, just to go back to our derived equations from the power series, this part, and let's make um, what we are trying to do. We just are trying to put the coefficient for this highest term to be uh, one term. And we will put this coefficient for the x to the m plus r to be one term. So um, we write our equations we have sum from m equals to zero to infinity m plus r times m plus r minus one a m minus m plus r a m plus a m. This is the term for the x to the m plus r plus two, okay? We have also second term minus sum from m equals to zero to infinity m plus r times m plus r minus one a m plus m plus r a m minus a m to the x to the m plus r. Okay, so this is our this is our second term. This is our second term. Then we found that the first term is satisfied with our first step, where that we have the uh, exponential is the highest term as well, starting with m equals to zero to infinity. But the second term is not satisfied. So we need to shift this term to be like the highest term. Then what we are trying to do, we will use substitution where p equals to m minus two, so that m equals to p plus two. So that this term will be the highest term like. Then let's just replace m with p what for the second term, for the second term replace m with p, okay? Then what we have for the second term, p will be start with minus two to the infinity, p 
plus 2 plus r times p plus 1 plus r, a p plus 2 plus p plus 2 plus r times a p plus 2 minus a p plus 2 well, of, uh, times m of p plus 2 plus r. Then we just need to figure out when p equals to minus 1, when p equals to minus 2, what this term look like, OK? p equals to minus 2, then the first term will be r times r minus 1, a naught minus r times a naught, right, minus a naught times the a to the r, sorry, x to the r. This is when p equals to minus 2, OK? How about p equals to minus 1? That will be r plus 1 times r a 1 p equals to minus 1. This is the first part. This is for the p equals to minus 1 plus minus 1 r plus 1 a 1 minus a 1 times x to the r plus 1. Then when p equals to 0 to infinity, then everything will be the same as this, right? Everything will be the same. So we can rewrite uh, our equation. This is well, the equation, let's say equation one, back into um, all the terms have x to the m plus r plus one, a two, and the sum start with m equals to zero to infinity, okay? Then um, what we have will be the sum m equals to zero to infinity, m plus r times m plus r minus one a m minus m plus r times a m plus a m x to the m plus r plus two. So this is the first term is unchanged, right? Then the second term, will be p equals to minus 2, p equals to minus 1, and start with p equals to 0 to infinity. So minus m equals to 0 to infinity, which is p equals to 0 to infinity, the same equation, just to replace p with m. So that will be m plus 2 plus r, m plus 1 plus r, a m plus 2 plus m plus 2 plus r, a m plus 2 minus a m plus 2 times x to the m plus r plus 2, right? And we need to minus this term as well as this term, minus. So um, r squared minus r a naught minus r a naught minus a naught x to the r term minus r plus 1 times r a 1 plus r plus 1 a 1 minus a 1 times x to the r plus 1. This whole thing will be equals to 0. Okay, this whole thing equals to be 0. So the first term is unchanged from the first one. The second term, we need to shift the x m plus r term to be x to the m plus r plus 2. So we use the substitution where the p will represent by m. Then we figure out after we use the p, this, well, this whole sum will start with p equals to minus 2 to infinity. Well, it's easy when p equals to 0 to infinity. Basically, just everything is the same as before. But p equals to minus 2 and p equals to minus 1, we need to list separately. Then we put the whole thing back after we shift the, the highest part to be m plus r plus 2 and separate this two parts. So this is 